In this video, we're going to automate the head and shoulders pattern using Python. I'll show how to find the patterns on any scale, small or large. I'll also show a method to identify the patterns early so we can test if a market has a tendency to finish the pattern. I'm assuming if you clicked this video, you already know roughly what this pattern is. Arguably, it is the most famous or well-known chart pattern. According to technical analysis dogma, the head and shoulders pattern is said to proceed a downward move, while the inverted version is said to proceed an upward move. The pattern consists of five major turning points, I'll call them the left shoulder, left armpit, head, right armpit, and right shoulder. The line connecting the two armpits is often called the neckline. Once the price breaks below the neckline, the pattern is said to be confirmed. We can automate this pattern by using the rolling window algorithm to find local tops and bottoms in the price. I cover the rolling window algorithm in detail in my video about the essential algorithms for chart pattern automation. But quickly it just checks if a point is the highest or lowest point compared to its neighboring points. At any point in time we can look at the last five major turning points and see if they have the shape of a head and shoulders pattern. I employ a few rules to determine if the turning points qualify as a head and shoulders pattern. I'll explain them using this pattern, but know they all apply symmetrically to the inverted version. First, we check that the center point, the head, is greater than the two shoulders. The second rule is checking for balance. We find the midpoint between the shoulders and their respective armpits, shown in purple. Both shoulders should be above the midpoints. The third rule is checking for symmetry. The time between each shoulder and the head should be comparable. If one is greater than 2.5 times the other, then we disqualify the pattern. These last two rules, the balance and symmetry rules, are from the book Technical Analysis for Algorithmic Pattern Recognition, written by two authors whose names I will not attempt to pronounce. I am a big fan of these authors, they have many cool papers along with this book. If these rules pass, we wait until the price closes below the neckline to confirm the pattern. After implementing this, I was looking at the matches and I found that many times the candle that penetrates the neckline is large. If we were to execute on the close of the penetrating candle, we would have missed out on the majority of the move. Perhaps when traders see that the market is about to complete a head and shoulders pattern, they all jump in. One option is to place a stop market order on the neckline, but I think it would be better if we could just be a little early. So instead of waiting for the penetration of the neckline, we can confirm the pattern when the price closes below the midpoint between the right shoulder and its armpit. Of course, this could lead to erroneous identification of the head and shoulders pattern. The price may never actually go below the neck, but that's the price we pay to be a little early. Let's look at the identification code. The head and shoulders pattern data is kept in this data class. It holds all the information about the identified patterns. We have a boolean if it's inverted. These are the indices of the input array of the major turning points that make up the pattern. These are the prices at those indices. These are the start and end points of the pattern. We also include some attributes about the pattern. This function, find HS patterns, finds head and shoulders patterns on an input array, which in practice will be the closing price. We specify an order for the ruling window algorithm. The larger the order, the bigger the patterns that will be found. We also specify if we want to employ the early identification of the patterns. We keep track of the most recent five price extremes and these decks, or double-ended queues. We loop through each candle in the dataset. As the rolling window tops and bottoms are found, we add their index to the double-ended queues. If we don't have five, we can't identify patterns yet, so we continue on. The rolling window algorithm does not guarantee that the tops and bottoms will alternate, so we must verify that the recent tops and bottoms do alternate as the pattern consists of alternating tops and bottoms. We start checking for the head and shoulder pattern after the ruling window confirms what would be the right armpit. The right shoulder is found as the maximum price since the armpit. I tried not doing this, that is waiting until the right shoulder is identified using the rolling window algorithm, but it often delays the identification of the pattern by a considerable amount of time. Unfortunately, this improved identification makes the code quite ugly, so bear with me. We verify the patterns in the check HS pattern and check IHS pattern functions for head and shoulders and inverted head and shoulders respectively. These functions return an instance of the head and shoulders data class if found. They return none otherwise. They are given the four rolling window tops and bottoms up to and including the armpit but not the right shoulder. Let's look at the check HS pattern function. We first unload the indices of the price extremes into readable names. We check if enough time has passed since the identification of the armpit. We find the index of the maximum price since the right armpit. This will serve as our right shoulder. First, we verify the head is greater than the two shoulders. Then we compute the two midpoints of the shoulders and verify the opposite shoulder is above the other midpoint. This is the balance rule. Then we find the amount of time between each shoulder and the head. We verify that the two times are comparable. One is not greater than 2.5 times the other. A higher degree of symmetry can be enforced with a lower value than 2.5. 
we compute the neckline slope and neckline value at the current index. Then we verify the price has broken below the neckline or the midpoint of the right shoulder, depending on if we're using early identification or not. At this point, we have to find where the pattern starts, as we have only looked at data since the left shoulder. So we loop backwards in time and find the first price below the neckline. This will serve as the start of the pattern. It's possible the price did not ever go below the neckline, in which case we don't verify the pattern and return none. This is not very common in practice. At this point, the pattern is confirmed. We create an instance of the pattern data class and store all the information about the pattern in it. The inverted pattern identification is the same, but symmetrically flipped. I won't go over the code here, but it's available on GitHub, link in the description. Now that we've gone over the identification, let's see how we can assess the pattern performance. We can enter a position after a head and shoulders pattern is identified, and I'll test two exits. The first simulates holding a position after the pattern is found for the length of time that the head spans, the length of time between the two troughs or armpits in the pattern. The bigger the pattern, the longer the hold period. The second employs a take profit and stop. It is based on common technical analysis teachings. The distance between the head and the neckline is the profit target. I'll call this the head height. For a stop, I'll use the right shoulder's price. We also employ a time limit as the width of the head. So if the stop price or take profit price is not reached in that time window, we exit the position. I'll apply both of these exit methods to the regular identification and early identification. Let's look at the code for these stops. To find the pattern return for the hold period exit, we just find the difference or percentage change from the price the pattern is identified to the future value. We don't really need a function, but for the stop and take profit rules, we do. And here it is. We give it the closing price array, an instance of the pattern data class. We also specify if the data is logarithmic prices or not. If they are, we just difference the entry and exit prices. If not, we compute the percentage change. We set the stop as the right shoulder. The take profit is set as the neckline value at the time of identification, plus or minus the head height, depending on if the pattern is inverted or not. We loop forward after the identification and find the first touch of either the stop or take profit value. After this loop is complete, the exit price will be set. We then compute the pattern return between the entry and exit price. The calculation will be different depending on if it's a long or short pattern and if we have logarithmic prices or not. We will use hourly Bitcoin Tether data for the performance testing from 2018 to the end of 2022. We will test with order parameters from 1 to 48. Here's the head and shoulders pattern performance with the hold period exit. The top left graph shows the number of patterns found at each order parameter. The top right is the average trades log return. For the head and shoulders pattern, I multiplied the returns by negative 1 to simulate a short position, while the inverted patterns will simulate a long position. The bottom left is the sum of returns, and the bottom right are the win rates. We can see that the head and shoulders pattern worked on some of the parameter values, but it's not consistent. Smaller patterns worked well, larger patterns did okay, but the medium sized failed and were not profitable. Here's the head and shoulders pattern with the stop and take profit rules as the exit. The stop rules failed to increase performance. It ruined the okay performance we saw on larger patterns and tended to lower the win rates on the parameter values where it did work. Let's look at the inverted head and shoulders results. The inverted head and shoulders also fails to offer consistent performance. Only a small section of the parameter space yielded okay results. Here's the inverted pattern with the stop rules as the exit. In this case, it appears the stop rule did help a bit. The performance is a little better, working on larger patterns, but the improvement is not very significant. Now let's look to see if the early identification had any effect. Here's the head and shoulders with early identification performance using the holding period as an exit. It doesn't appear to have done much. The same area of the parameter space still works. The number of patterns found with the early identification is quite a bit higher. It seems the pattern almost forms, then doesn't finish quite often. Here's the head and shoulders early identification with the stop exit. This doesn't look very good at all. The stop rule did not help the performance. The pattern does not have good performance on any area of the parameter space. But here is the inverted pattern with early identification. It appears the early identification improved the inverted pattern quite a bit. It worked on nearly every parameter, and the win rates are quite high as well. Perhaps the market has a tendency to complete inverted head and shoulders patterns, making it profitable to get in early. The stop exit doesn't seem to improve the results, but they're still quite good with the stop. It appears that the take profit rule often prescribed with head and shoulders patterns, that being a profit target using the distance from the head to the neckline, is not very effective, at least on Bitcoin. It offered little, if any, improvement on all configurations tested. The head and shoulders pattern is not very consistent across the parameter space, meaning that only certain sized patterns worked historically. 
The inverted head and shoulders did not perform consistently either, but the performance of the early identification turned around the inverted pattern's performance. The early identified inverted pattern performed across the entire parameter space, but the early identification did not help the regular head and shoulders patterns. At least for Bitcoin, the only pattern shown here that really worked well is the early identified inverted head and shoulders. And given the other forms of the head and shoulders pattern didn't really show great performance, I'm willing to say that the head and shoulders pattern doesn't really work well on Bitcoin. The thing about algorithmic trading is not everything you test will be a winner. In fact, most things you test will not work at all. You could use the code I released to test head and shoulders patterns on other markets. Maybe it will perform better on a different market. In my last video, we tested bull and bear flags on Bitcoin, and we actually found good, consistent performance. Good enough to inspire me to try other technical analysis chart patterns, hence this video. You can check that out here to see chart patterns actually working. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.